So today we've been given some polynomials and we've been asked to find the zeros of each polynomial and state the multiplicity. So a uh, real simple thing here on the first two specifically are already factored for us and so what we want to do is we want to look at what would make each of these parentheses, each of these factors equal to zero. And the easiest way to do that is to set each one equal to zero. Now, so I'm going to set this equal to zero, x minus four equals zero. And I'm going to solve that, move the four to the other side, and I get x equals four. Okay? And then here, I set x plus six equals to zero. Uh, solve for x, I get x equals negative 6. And here, I set 3x minus 5 equal to 0. Move the 5 over, we get 3x equals 5. Divide by 3, we get x equals 5 thirds. Now, one of the things that I notice a lot of people don't uh, understand is in this particular problem, you'll notice that I do not do anything with this negative 2. And the reason is because the value that I plug in for x does not affect this because there's no x value attached to it. Now, so those are our zeros. Our zeros are 4, negative 6, and 5 thirds. And then we have to state the multiplicity, okay? So this has a multiplicity of 1, this has a multiplicity of 1 because it only occurs once. It only occurs once. This has an exponent of 3, and the multiplicity is always going to be the exponent. So this will have a multiplicity of 3. This particular 0 will have a multiplicity of 3. Okay? So let's move down to the next one. And you'll notice very quickly... Um, it's very, very easy to spot, like for an example, x plus 6, it's x equals negative 6, or negative 6 plus 6 equals 0 is a quick way to think of that. So here I have x squared, so I set x squared equal to 0. Well, if I take the square root of both sides, what do I get? I get x equals 0. And because the exponent was 2, I have a multiplicity of 2. Here I have x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. So I have the same 0 four times. So what is this 0? It's x equals negative 3, because negative 3 plus 3 equals 0, with a multiplicity of 4. Multiplicity of 4. And then here, 2x plus 5, we can set that equal to 0 and solve. 2x equals negative 5, x equals negative 5 over 2. And it has a multiplicity of 1 because it only occurs one time. Okay? So that's how we find the zero and the multiplicity of a particular function. Now, um, if it's already factored. And we use this to help us graph, to sketch a graph of the function, and I'll do that later. I'll do a video of that later. Um, what if I give you a function that is not factored? Then how do you find the zeros and the multiplicity? Well, you need to do two things. The first step is to set it equal to zero, and then the second step is to factor it. So I'm going to take this polynomial here, and I'm going to set it equal to zero, set the y value here equal to zero. And I have four terms, so the easiest way for me to factor this is to group it. So I'm going to put x cubed plus 3x squared together, and then I'm going to put minus x minus 3 together. And I say, well, what can I factor out of x cubed plus 3x squared? What can I factor out of that? Well, I can factor out an x squared. What am I left with? x plus 3. Over here, I can factor out a negative 1, and what am I left with? Lo and behold, x plus 3. So what does this give me? Well, this gives me, remember, your individual factors make one factor, and then your common term makes up the other factor. So I get x squared minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0. And there are my factors. Only 
I notice that x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so that will give me x plus 1 times x minus 1. That's the equivalent of x squared minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0. Now, I'm still not done. All I've done is factor this. I still need to state the zeros and their multiplicity. Well, what will this give me? This will give me x equals negative 1. This will give me x equals 1. And this will give me x equals negative 3. And I can look at these and tell you because when the coefficient of x is 1, you're going to have x plus 3 equals 0. You're going to move this to the other side. All it's going to do is change the sign. So this will be negative 3, positive 1, negative 1. All with a multiplicity of 1. And the multiplicity becomes very important when we're graphing. It is not important if someone asks you to solve for the solution necessarily, uh, although it can be. But it's very important when we try to graph these, okay? So the last question here, x to the fourth minus x to the third minus x squared equals x squared minus x. Uh, and we want to find the zeros. Well, the first thing to do is set it equal to zero. So I get x to the fourth minus x to the third minus x squared plus x equals zero. And then I say, okay, well, I've got an x term in all four of these, so I'm going to factor that out. So I get x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. And then I say to myself, can I factor this in here by grouping? Well, I can try. No reason not to. So I get x times, and then I'm going to factor by grouping inside, um, x cubed minus x squared. I'm going to get x squared times x minus 1 and then here I'm going to factor out a minus 1 so I get minus 1 x minus 1 equals 0. So this grouping will give me the factors x squared minus 1 times x minus 1 and then the x gets copied and then I have to remember that's a difference of squares so I can factor it again so I come over here and I factor it again. So I get x times x plus 1, x minus 1, and those are factors of that, and then copy the x minus 1 equals 0. Now, what do I have? I have the factors, but I notice something. Those are the same, so what are they? You get x, x plus 1, x minus 1 squared. So this is going to give me an, a solution of x equals 0. This is going to give me a solution of x equals negative 1. And this is going to give me a solution of x equals 1. Okay? Exponent is 1, so the multiplicity is 1. This has an exponent of 1, so it's going to give me a multiplicity of 1. This has an exponent of 2, or if you go back up here, it occurs twice. So it's going to have a multiplicity of 2. And that's going to help us greatly in graphing these polynomials. Okay. So if you have any questions, please let me know.